Welcome to October 2019, which is also going to be the next release of Mahara that we are going to have at the end of the month. And so what I wanted to do today is just give you a brief idea of some of the bigger features that you will be able to see very soon, hopefully also on the instances that you are using. And um, kind of really looking into what is possible with Mahara these days um, once October comes to the end. It is also the 13th anniversary of Mahara. Last month, the September was the anniversary actually in the third week when that was when the first commit was made into Mahara by Penny Leach back in 2006. And so it's really been exciting just to, to look back and see where we started with Mahara and what we have changed over the years. And of course, also looking into what we are kind of planning on still continuing to change going forward. And kind of the things that we are looking at is after having been already kind of 13 years old is that we do want to stay and need to stay modern um, so that people still want to continue using Mahara, um, that we need to stay flexible because lots of people have different requirements to work with Mahara, be that showcase portfolios, portfolios for work integrated learning, um, portfolios for assessment purposes, for registration purposes. I mean, we have lots of people here from the DHB today. So that, of course, is a requirement. And also going from tertiary education <coughs> into the workforce. And that also then, of course, means that we are staying relevant as software, that p software project, that people still want to use Mahara because they can do all the things that they want to do, or that even if they won't be able to do everything with core Mahara, can then make extensions to it, make changes, or contribute features into the software that then make it possible for them to do all the things. And we, how do we do that? Well, we have consultations with people. Last year, for example, we worked quite closely with White and DHB, in particular Miriam, Tabitha, and Janine, to figure out, well, how can we support nurse portfolios for the PDRP process? What can we sh change or should we change in Mahara to make that workflow more streamlined and not have so many workarounds, but really go a straight line to what is needed so that the nurses have an easy path into the portfolio, want to work with them quite a bit, and um, can really have a good experience with it. And I'm sure we'll be hearing a little of that today during the um, session right before lunch, um, sharing what you have been up to, because it's been really exciting to follow that over the last year of what has been going on at uh, Waitemata. And that, of course, these um, consultations then result in projects. And Mahara 18.10 had a lot of features in there um, from Mahara 1904 had a lot of features again, and of course previous versions of Mahara as well, with contributions from around the community, um, the Northern Hemisphere, our Southern Hemisphere, and then we at Catalyst also put a lot of features in. And these projects help us kind of progress Mahara not just in small steps, but also in bigger ones. Having said that, small changes, and there in particular learning works has become important over the last year, have contributed a number of small bug fixes or small features that have been lingering on our tracker for quite a time. Um, and it's good to see those things be getting done because sometimes it's also those small things that have a really huge impact and make people say, oh, finally this is in there and they can just go ahead. So it is a really good combination of small and big features that make up the software. And so just briefly, before I actually go into the new features, I'd like to show, kind of tell you a little bit of what our roadmap is made up of. So not looking at the very specific items itself, but kind of the roadmap in general, so that you have an idea of what we're actually always putting into a version of Mahara. And the first thing, of course, is typically usability improvements. Because Mahara started in 2006, the internet, software, and all of that looked very different at that time. Now in 2019, going into 2020, people are used different things. And so we need to look at, well, how can we improve the software so that 
people still like using it, that it follows modern ways of using the internet, and that is where usability improvements come in. We look at how can we make ways shorter to get from one functionality to the next one. Do we want to rename certain things in the software? Do we want to reshuffle things around? You will have seen that we've done quite a bit in regards to the navigation, kind of changing the menus, making it more mobile consistent, and um, also changed wording around, um, changed elements in the menus around. So all of those things contribute to those usability improvements, and we'll have a bunch of those in Mahara 19.0. Then, of course, feature development. Um, that usually also, of course, ties in with usability improvements, but features kind of like smart evidence or <coughs> LPI integration that it becomes it, that it is possible to do assessments via Mahara and also Moodle, Totara, and other learning management systems and other bigger features that just give us different uh, functionality in the software. Then we also need technology updates. Again, going back to we've been, we've had our 13th anniversary. Technology does age over time, like unfortunately we do as well. And so we do need to make improvements and giving Mahara a facelift, I think is easier than giving people facelifts and do all of that. And therefore we are kind of having our developers look into new libraries, look into updates so that we can use modern ways of uh, developing. And of course, we also have bug fixes that uh, need to get done because while we are trying to not put many bugs into the software, sometimes people do have workarounds of how to get through something and find stuff that we haven't seen during our testing. And so those things also get fixed for each version of Mahara. And then, come on And something that is not really going into the software itself is our community infrastructure updates, which we need to consider, of course, for every release cycle as well, um, so that we are keeping our wiki up to date, that we are keeping our um, Mahara manual up to date, the code review system that we're using, and all of those servers that also runs the dem that run the demo site, our Mahara community site, and so on. All of that also needs to be in the work package of what our team at Catalyst does in order to support the community. And so all of that kind of is being done every half year. And then once a the half year is over, and sometimes even not already before that, we are starting on the new version of Mahara. And therefore, it's a really rolling cycle there, which is very exciting because um, we are always looking into the future while still working on the present um, very shortly upcoming new version. But now, directly, what's going into the new version? We have we will have a placeholder block. And that means that the entire edit screen in particular is being revamped. And I will make those slides available as well afterwards. So if you want to share them with your colleagues so that they can see what is happening, then you're welcome to do so. And so what this looks like is instead of having all those blocks on the left-hand side, now there's one button and you can give it a title and then just click Save. That is perfect for template creation because you don't have to tell anymore, this is an image block, this is a video block, and then students saying, well, I wanted to put a journal in there, but I can't and have to remove the block. So now students can decide when they get the template, which sort of block do I actually want to have in there. The working title of this one was Magic Block. Um, we kind of pared it down a bit to placeholder block, and it was development work that we've done on behalf of Dublin City University. Um, Lisa Donaldson and Mark Glenn and their team came up with that idea because they're working quite extensively with templates, and it was quite frustrating always having these instructions on the page saying, well, if you don't want to put this block there, remove it, and then put another one there with the actual artifacts that you like to have there. Now, going with this placeholder block, we actually also have an administrator interface because you have seen that now all those blocks are there as buttons in a long list. And now you'll have the possibility to reorder that list as site administrator and decide which ones shall be displayed in that first row of four when you're on a uh, desktop or laptop computer and which ones should become further down. 
therefore making it possible to put all the much used blocks at the top mm. or highlight blocks that are underused and push them up. And on this admin interface, once there it's on an upgraded site, um, you will actually see also the number of times a certain block has been used on your site. Therefore giving you that insight on which ones do you um, push up and which ones um, should maybe also be pushed up so that they can be seen more often and easily. Staying on the edit screen, we will have a more flexible layout. So right now you're all used to this one that you click the settings button, you scroll down to the layout, then select one of the columns and rows, maybe create your own layout, and then have to rearrange all the blocks if you already have a page full of them so that they fit into the new layout. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of what is happening now. S what we are doing instead, the new way, is that you don't have to go into settings anymore. Oh. You just drag and drop the edges of the blocks and resize them on the screen, on the fly. And um, <laughs> that is technology that um, we've implemented from, uh, from Catalyst side because it really is more flexible working with it. Mm. Now you might wonder, well, we have to be accessible as well at our organizations. What do we do? Because this entire thing here needs to be operated by a mouse. Um, we implemented accessible formats so that when you want to create an accessible format, you only have one column available. And then you say, add things to the bottom or to the top, and then can use the keyboard to move those blocks up and down. Because if you're thinking about a blind person, um, they are not able, to, or they are reading linearly, so from one top to bottom, and therefore it doesn't matter whether they have one, two, three, or four columns, they are going one column down anyway. So for them, it is easier to work with a one column layout, therefore we are making that as the accessible one. It is still possible though for everybody who gets a template with multiple columns and multiple rows and all that to use it also with a screen, or with a screen reader and um, with the keyboards. But for creating it, we are making it easier for them so that everything just goes full width. Staying on the edit screen, one relatively small feature change is that now that we have all the buttons sitting on the right hand side, we kind of also decided to put the display button and return to pages button there. Um, so that the edit button turns into the display page button so that you can kind of toggle between them. And the nice thing is also when you then click on this one, it goes back to the overview of the pages. And because these buttons stay on the right hand side of the screen, <coughs> so when you can scroll on a very long page, you can always reach those buttons. You don't have to go all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom again. So again, making things easier and faster. And all these buttons do have tooltips and they are also accessible so that people, if they don't, can't really know what, or don't really see what the icon wants to tell them, that they do have the possibility to just hover over a little bit longer, at least on desktop and laptop, and then see what is happening. At the moment, they still have to edit each block, though. Yes, yeah. yes. So that is... And we, we are still thinking about um, how we can make it easier to not necessarily have that mm. configure icon because actually the blocks have different functions because mm. you can drag and drop the heading, then you would need to click into the heading or click into the text and how to do all of that mm. um, is a bigger usability challenge there. Mm. Yeah. Tina, how did the, when you got that drag and drop layout, mm -hmm. how does the, <coughs> how do you do how does the software decide the number of columns that are, does that depend on the size of the item? Um, so the, uh, the, there are actually 12 columns yeah. because we are going with the bootstrap grid. So mm -hmm. theoretically you could have, I think six, because I think we are always going according to having two columns at minimum mm -hmm. and you just drag. So you will see that um, you can't uh, kind of change things specifically. They are always kind of snapping to a grid right. a bit. 
and you can also um, change the height of a block and therefore arrange things very flexibly. Now, artifact comments on a page. Um, right now, we always have these details and add comments mm -hmm. links at the bottom, which kind of break the flow of reading. A lot of people always say, well, Mahara is very blocky. And if you're looking at um, internet sites, every page is kind of blocky because you have a picture, you have text, then you have another picture, you might have a video in there. So everything kind of is in blocks. But what we've done is we put those artifact comments and details links at the bottom of each block when you can have details, um, get metadata information, and when you can comment on them, which really breaks that flow of reading. And so what we are doing instead now is we're getting rid of them. And you can click on the image instead or on uh, the title of a journal article, and you get that model come out directly. So you're not being taken away from the page, go to a second page, need to come back, lose your space on the page, but it just comes out so that you're still on the page itself mm -hmm. and can comment on the artifact. Now, of course, if we are looking at text, we can't click on text and then bring that model out because text might also have links included or might have a picture in there that we want to link somewhere else. So that's why we are implementing a comments and details mode. And that is very useful, I think, for when you're doing assessment and need to see, well, which elements have already been commented on. So you can still click the individual elements but you also have this new button for the details and then get these black bars which tell you directly whether they have already been comments made, whether they are details, in particular also for those blocks where you can't already click on the artifact itself. Making it easier to see which things have already been commented on mm -hmm. and definitely being able to get to the details and that could be the mode that assessors are having on when they are looking at student portfolios, when they are reviewing them, when they are giving feedback. Whereas when um, the portfolio should only be looked at for showcase purposes, for work integrated learning or at the end of a semester, then we are not inundated by all those extra bits and pieces on the page, but they are kind of a way tucked away into the corner and um, can get activated by clicking that one icon. Will this be something you can enable in the same? Um, you it no. Slightly. No, you can't enable or disable it, um, but you could probably hide that button if you like, but then you're losing quite a bit of functionality, mm -hmm. and um, therefore we just put it to the side there. But the button could be put at the bottom or could be hidden under the three dots for examples. Mm -hmm. um, right now we are having it on the outside, but you do see we don't have the copy button there anymore. Mm -hmm. We only have the edit button and move the copy one into the more options because um, kind of it, we don't have to copy things all the time. That's after a while we kind of tuck that away a bit more. And the nice thing about this mode is also that it is sticky. So if you're reviewing 10 or 20 portfolios and want to have all these comments on and see them, you don't have to click that button every single time you reload the page or go to a new portfolio, but it stays there until you click it off again. Um, that way we want to make it easier for assessors to just go through things quickly without again having more page clicks. Christina, <coughs> yeah? that, that mode, what will, what will the student view look like? Or how would they tell the comments you made? In the um, the student sees exactly the same. Okay. So that mode is there to bring forward the, uh, that metadata. And so this is the display mode and when a student or a teacher clicks that link, they get the, those black bars and therefore can see very quickly, well, how many comments has a particular artifact already received? Um, and where do I might want to comment? And that is why we also still have that functionality available rather than just not showing it at all. 
Mm. And how will that work with journals where, you know, currently you can do a comment on each journal entry? Yep, so for journals, we'll just have to wait until my animated GIF goes back <laughs> to... So for journal entries, every entry will get one of those small oh, buttons. Okay. Yeah. So the big bars are the, there for when there is one block, one artifact, and the small ones when we have multiple artifacts within um, a, a big block. Yeah. <coughs> now we are going to Germany, um, because there the University of Bremen has developed assignment plans. They've been testing that for roughly the last year, I think, at the university. And instead of me creating a plugin, they offered to put that into Mahara Core. And now all plans will be, it will be possible with any plan to also have assignment plans. So what does that mean? Anybody can set up template plans. And those plans can include tasks so that you can now include a task portfolio with an assignment description on um, a task, and then also give it a reminder so that students can get emailed before something is due, and um, can have a template portfolio attached, which students could then use as basis for their future work. Then these temp this template portfolio can then be used in a group plan, which is new, can be copied in there, and then made available to the students. So this is the instructor view. Now we're becoming a student. The student can go into the group, go to the plans, and then decide which activity they want to do, which task they want to fulfill. They can preview the task activity, they can preview the portfolio, and then just say, yes, I'm going to do task one and task two of this entire plan. They go into their own portfolio area, and immediately the portfolios attached to those tasks, those template portfolios, will be put into their account. And they can go also into the plan itself, um, go to the portfolios from there, and then also um, complete the portfolios mm -hmm. and have those automatically submitted into the group if the group allows submissions so that um, they then go back. So that could be levels and they say yes I want to do this um, <coughs> competent, competent nursing portfolio and it would give them all the pages they need. Yes, yeah. for example. It's like yeah. Yep. And it would say due in three years. Due in year. four weeks. Yeah. The, um, the, the reminder is um, according to the editability dates of the group, if you put any of those in there. But the, the reminder can be changed once the person has copied the portfolio or the plan or that particular task into their portfolio themselves. So once the, the task is in the personal plan, it is entirely in the control of the student okay. again, mm -hmm. so that they can then change the reminder, change the template portfolio if they s decide to put something else there. The only thing they can't really change is the task portfolio, so that uh, always still sits in the group, um, so that it is more centrally available. And then also if somebody decides, oh, I actually don't really want to do that task one, um, don't need it anymore, and if they haven't touched that portfolio that was copied into their account, it just gets removed and it is not there anymore. So that it doesn't leave a trace. And this is really nice functionality I find to work with template portfolios to um, have those reminders there and also to give tasks to students when they are required to do assessment portfolios because it takes away those the entire instructions of copying and having those reminders and giving them manually or having them in the learning management system because all of that can now be done directly in Mahara itself. Question on the, so when you have a group plan and it lists the mm -hmm. plans and then the student goes, I want to do plan one or task one um, and they say yes, Yeah. one student. Can the next student do task one? Yes. Yes. So, that, so is it so when 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 you when you see it because in your 
um, diagram you've got it as yes, that goes to yes, Nicole goes to yes. So if student B goes in, will they see yes as being a sign? No. Th so the in when the student goes into the group, that's that's a good question, Javi. Um, when the student goes into the group, those yes no toggles they are for themselves. So they are not a group toggle. Um, they are more for every student individually. Right. Yes, this correct. Have the next well, then you don't wouldn't set it up as assignment plan. Mm -hmm. Then you would set it up as normal group plan, and uh, because we still have normal group plans as well and normal plans too, we just have that extra functionality now available that the um, that a plan can actually have assignments. Do we need to use groups? Can we just do it? In can we do our at the institute level? Well, we can just have one group that's in this and portfolio. Yeah. No, it doesn't work on the institutional site level. It's currently tied to the groups. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's quite exciting, Christina, because I've, I've been pondering for mm -hmm. some time on task with um, our leadership courses. Yeah. So we have leadership courses that I really want to make into more of a program. So I've been looking at how to to guide that program along, and I, I think you've just done it for me. I think, you know, that would be, yeah, really... What we got? Yeah. yeah. Well, you have definitely have to thank um, Alexander Del Ponte and uh, Carsten Wolf from the University of Bremen for that, because they, they thought up the functionality, and that is another example um, of how we can put workflows into Mahara, make it easier for people, um, because they've taken existing functionality and added onto it. Yes. And um, instead of redeveloping the entire thing, they looked at, well, what <coughs> can we do? And there is actually an extension to this functionality, which we are looking into getting into, Maha into the April version, so Mahara 2004, um, namely that uh, they also have functionality to make it easier to see submissions in a group and being being able to <laughs> being able to assign <laughs> assign different markers to portfolios from within a group in Mahara um, but that is huge functionality that that will take quite a bit of testing and so we kind of pushed it a bit out um, because we do need to get Mahara 19.10 out by the end of October but that is something else that you can then look forward to next year yeah. and that will make it possible not to rely so much anymore on the learning <coughs> on the learning management system because then you can just do that assessment workflow um, directly in Mahara yeah. itself yeah. it's like you've got something for everyone <laughs> It's, it's good. It's really good to see that um, there's lots of stuff in there for, for everyone. And there is actually more. Um, we are also going to have page header backgrounds. Um, that, that means that you can put an image in behind the page header or you can change the color. And then something for the technologists amongst you, for the developers. We are removing database triggers, which will make it easier, especially on cloud-hosted infrastructure, to work with Mahara. And um, then there is much, much more to come. There are a few other smaller features. I try to focus really on the, on the big ones, because they, of course, are the most exciting ones, because they change Mahara fundamentally, especially if, when we are looking at how the editing screen has changed and is changing with the placeholder block and also with the flexible layout, with the accessible layout and all of those things. But not forgetting that there are also smaller new features and bug fixes that really round it up and uh, make it a very good release. This is going to be a very huge release again. Um, why? We have not given you the preview version yet. So we are looking into making that available next week, ideally early next week. So watch out on Twitter and in the announcements on mahara.org um, because you will be able to use one of our developer sites <laughs> to sign up and then give those new features a play. And then of course we are looking at releasing before the end of the month because I really do not want to change our release into 19.11. Mm. Um, it will stay 19.10 and therefore needs to get out latest on the 31st of October. And that is the date. Um, but hopefully we'll 
many to few days early even so we'll see but it's definitely going to be released by the end of October so that you can start planning for <laughs> an upgrade over the summer holidays and therefore make all these new features available to your staff to your learners and um, see how they are being taken up Yes, <laughs> it, certainly, <laughs> it was certainly more than a bucket full of work. <laughs> and so, so did you have, I don't know, did you have extra money put in or something? Or was it just um, we catalyst, catalyst working harder? <laughs> we decided to implement a number of big features uh, from Catalyst's side mm. um, in order to, <laughs> yeah, stay relevant and keep Mahara relevant. Because when we are looking at, well, people deciding between Mahara and other e-portfolio systems, when they are not deciding for Mahara, we have to ask ourselves why. And so those are the questions that we've been pondering and therefore, <laughs> in, and we already started that in the 1904 release, where it's changes to the page header, making that more visible, um, taking the buttons a bit make it back, not having them so prominent right on the page heading anymore, but to the side, that they are staying they are not call, um, that they are not calling and all of that to really look at those improvements that um, we can have a portfolio that does look good that people want to work with and that um, we can innovate from that part. Yeah. And we have been very fortunate to have some uh, client work, of course, for some of the bigger features that helped us uh, bring those in, notably Dublin City University. And then the plans came from the University of Bremen, therefore having that huge development work done by them. And so we still had um, code review and testing to do. Um, but of course, that is much reduced compared to during the entire business analysis uh, solution design around it, what should it look like, the user testing, and then also the development work itself. So we've been working fairly closely with a developer, Alex, in Germany, um, and it's been really fantastic working with him and seeing the feature develop, because I had seen it sometime last year, and he, of course, always had things to change and things to improve on and he already sent me another long list of things that we could be doing as a project to make it even better from where it is right now. So we are putting that now into Mahara 19.10 to make it available to people so that they can test things out. There's another bigger feature coming into 19.10 um, that I haven't really talked about um, because it's concerning primarily single sign-on organizations because it will be possible for one person to move their portfolio into another institution that uses single sign-on as well by them changing their the authentication method themselves. So there's some trickery in there which is quite fascinating. Um, and then another feature we are holding off until April 20 of uh, so version 2004 because we did not have the time within the last half year to finalize the code review and the testing and that will be hold on to your tables complete export of portfolios as PDFs <laughs> so that is a feature we are developing <laughs> for Tirito Mayoha um, and because PDFs are flat they can't really play video we still need to find a way of making those videos available so you will get a pdf document but alongside also all the files that are included in that pdf so that when you click a link to a video it actually goes to the video in that archive that has been downloaded or to the audio file and can be reviewed and so currently because you can already print a page as PDF, but that really is more a print. The mm -hmm. files don't come along. Mm -hmm. What this PDF export will do is, even when you have a collection of 20, 30, 40, 50 pages, it'll all put it in one PDF document mm -hmm. and then bring all the files along. Mm -hmm. So that was another huge feature um, that is kind of there to 90, 95%, I would say. So that we are then needing to do code review on it and a bit more testing. And that's why we are holding it back for next year. But I have to come back to the Mahara Keeping my meeting um, to show you other exciting things. Cool. Yeah.
Yep, and that is really the 19.10 release. Um, lots of exciting things in there um, <laughs> that I hope you all will be trying out very soon. Um, even if you might not be upgrading immediately, please do give us feedback and do a bit of your own testing on our development server um, so that we know whether we are still on the right track, whether there are certain things that you'd like to put on the wish list or certain things that you might want to look into making changes yourself. Thank you.